Um, always great to be out this way. Uh, just coming off revival at Spy Run. Uh, we had a good revival. Um, does that mean there was a shouting and praising God? Well, sometimes. Uh, does that mean there was a full house? Well, uh, most of the time. Uh, we had a good revival uh, because the truth was sang and preached to us every night. And that's what we needed. You know, shouts will fade down. Good feelings will fade down. Big crowds come and grow. Uh, but the truth of God does not come, nor does it go. It's always right there. And that's what we need. Um, thankful to be here tonight. The only reason I can be here tonight is we had homecoming this morning. And we didn't have a service, so I said I'd be able to come out this way. I had a good homecoming. I got beat in horseshoes. Me and Travis both did. So... Uh, I don't know. They beat both the preachers in the church. I don't know if that's good or bad for them, uh, but they run me and Travis out in horseshoes. Travis did all he did. He scored all of our points but one. So <laughs> I'm not very good at horseshoes if you can get the message. Uh, but tonight, all joking aside, um, very serious message on my heart tonight. Um, you know, I think we need to get back to the basics. Um, I think if we got back to the basics, the things that we do in church and the problems that we'd have in church uh, would go away. Uh, because too many times, uh, what Jesus did on the cross and Him coming out of that tomb is something we only really uh, get a hold of during Easter. Uh, it's just a song we sing in a hymn book or a lesson we hear in Sunday school until it's Easter, then we really think about it. Uh, you know, I don't have to wait for Easter to think about what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. I don't have to wait for Easter to think about the resurrection. I can think about that every day of my life, and I need that every day of my life. So if you have your Bibles, turn the book of Luke, the 23rd chapter, uh, 32nd verse through the 46th verse. Luke 23, 42, and it's on the screen behind me if you don't have a Bible. Luke 23, 32. Sometimes I think why we don't go back to the basics and we don't think about Jesus and how good Jesus is because we forget how bad we are and were and that kind of lessens the light on Jesus. But tonight if we'd humble ourselves and really remember where we came from and remember our faults and our failures, we'd appreciate our Lord and Savior a little bit more. Luke 23, 32. Sounds like everybody's there. And there were also two male, two others, excuse me, male factors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left hand. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription was also written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost thou, <clears throat> Does not thou fear God? seeing thou art in the same condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness all over the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when, Jesus had <clears throat> and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, to thy hands I commend my spirit. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. God, we're thankful, Lord, just to be here tonight. Lord, thankful for the reading uh, of your word. God, thankful, Lord, for the songs and testimonies that we've heard thus far. But now, God, I've come to the word of God. This is not my message, Lord. It's yours. And God, I just pray you hide me behind the cross tonight. Lord, let me just be a voice uh, unto what you want to say tonight, God. Uh, hide Blake tonight. Not uh, words over that you want, not words under, but exactly what you want tonight, the way you want it, Lord. Let me be 
found faithful, Lord, uh, to carry out this message. And God, I know if you're faithful to send a message, you're faithful to open up ears and open up hearts, God, uh, to receive this message. And what we do with it, Lord, is on our terms, God. Uh, but it will reach where it needs to go. And it will hit the ear that it needs to hit tonight, God. It won't return void. Uh, God, we just pray right now that we could leave this place not just being hearers or approvers of the Word of God, but that we'd be doers of the Word of God. And in Jesus' name, I pray. Uh, <clears throat> amen. Tonight, I want to preach on the thief on the cross. Um, something we talk about a lot uh, but you know what I do this message a little different you may have heard me do it before uh, before I get anywhere till we get those three men there we're going to talk about what it's like to be a thief because if I could title this message anything it would be that I am a thief I'm a thief tonight and when I look across this church tonight, uh, I see a church full of thieves. Uh, that may upset you, that may bother you, uh, but if you really think about it and you listen to this message tonight and you think about what the Lord has said in His Word, uh, we're a church full of thieves, a church full of robbers and murderers uh, and turned our backs on God, but He still loved us enough uh, uh, that He gave His Son for us. Uh, the old song says, Three men up on a mountain, up on Calvary. The man in the middle was Jesus. And he died for you and me. So let's put ourselves in the eyes of a thief, shall we? The first thing I want to talk about when we talk about a thief uh, is that this man was a man of despicable crimes. Now when we hear the word thief, uh, a lot of time we think about someone that will steal something out of a grocery store. Somebody that will steal something from a neighbor. Somebody steals steal something from a friend. Uh, but when the Bible says thief here, uh, it's not talking about your common thief. Uh, it's talking about someone that's uh, done things uh, much worse than that. Talking about someone who's lied uh, and murdered uh, and done all kinds of awful things. Uh, he is a disgrace. Uh, he is uh, the problem of society. And because of his actions and because of what he has chose to do with his life, uh, he must now be labeled uh, the thief uh, and he must walk to Calvary's Hill and he must die on the cross uh, as the government says. He was a man of despicable crimes. Oh, Brother Blake, what does that have to do with me? I've never murdered anybody. Uh, I, I've never done anything wrong uh, in my life. I've never spent time in jail. I've never been arrested. Uh, I've never been in big trouble. How does this apply to me? Listen, you may have not broken the law of this land, but you've broken the law of God. If you can find one person uh, that hasn't broken the law of God, you can come call God a liar, but you can look the world over and you won't find one. There was only one man that walked on earth that didn't break the law, and that was Jesus. Uh, we've all come short of the glory of God. Uh, every one of us has broken his commandments. Well, Brother Blake, I've kept the major ones. Jesus said if you broke one of them, you transgressed against God, didn't you? If you break one commandment, that's transgressing against God. So it doesn't really matter what the law you broke. It's all transgressions against the same God. It's still crimes against God. Folks, that is the being that created you tonight. That's the being that gave you life. You're made in His image, and you broke His law. You know what? You feel bad uh, when you let somebody down uh, that's done a lot for you in your life. Uh, but who's done more for you than God tonight? Uh, and every one of us has turned our back on Him and committed crimes uh, and broken His law. I don't believe it, Brother Blake. Yes, you have. Look back on your life. Look what? The Lord has said, and look what you failed to do. So he was a man of despicable crimes. Uh, uh, but you know what I was thinking? Uh, we like to label 